sound weird or if I'm screaming or make any weird faces. <laughs> um, I can't hear out of my left ear for some unknown reason. I think it's allergies. I honestly don't know, but I can't hear a single thing. So I've just been screaming at everyone for the past couple of days because I don't realize that I'm doing it. So I apologize ahead of time if I do that. Today's video, I am so incredibly excited about because I've actually been waiting to do this case for a really long time. I try to plan all of my cases out for the most part um, a couple weeks in advance. And this is one of the cases that I've been like, is it time yet? Is it time yet? I can't wait to do it. And that's because this is probably one of the first cases where almost all of me thinks that this person's 100% still alive. So this video is also going to be a little bit different because it's not so much about the story itself, but about the theories, because the theories surrounding this case are absolutely insane. And I'm sure you guys have heard of this case, and it is the disappearance of Lars Matank. Lars Matank, I don't know, you guys already know the drill. I'm probably saying it wrong. I know you'll all correct me down below or laugh at me. I don't know. Either way, today's case is on Lars Matank. So on June 30th, 2014, 28-year-old Lars Matank and a couple of friends decided to go on a vacation. They traveled to Golden Sands, Bulgaria, which was apparently the hot spot for all European travelers. If you wanted to go somewhere nice um, and kind of get that beachy summer vacation vibe, that is where you went. They stayed in a super nice hotel. Um, everything was all included bougie like to the nines it was such a nice place and according to the friends they all had a really great time they were scheduled to go home on July the 7th but on July 6th something kind of strange happened they decided to go to a bar some people say that this bar does not have a good reputation um, one thing I will say before I go even deeper into this case is that it is covered a lot by German news I do not speak German. <laughs> I cannot read German. Um, a lot of the information regarding this case was mainly in German. So I had only very few sources to get my information. I could not even get Google Translate to work properly when it came to figuring out these articles. So a lot of this is like wishy-washy hearsay. Anyways, moving on. So they went to a bar which did not have the best reputation, supposedly. And there was some sort of game going on, some sports event. Um, I'm not into sports very much, so I don't know. But Lars ended up getting into a pretty bad fight with a couple of other people. They were arguing over the game and then it turned into an actual physical altercation. And he got hit so hard in the head that he ended up with an ear injury. That same day, a local doctor examined him, said that he had ruptured his ear. And once again, here's the wishy-washy news. Something said that the doctor told him he could not fly home the next day. Other article said that the doctor said he could fly home. So... I find it interesting that a lot of key points in the story are the ones that people are so unsure about. I decided to research on my own and figure out what the general consensus is when it comes to flying with ruptured eardrums, and even I got a very wishy-washy answer. Um, some people, some doctors said it was perfectly fine, that the tear that's already there, the hole that's already there, nothing would happen with the change in pressure that might actually end up relieving a lot of the pain the person's in. I don't know how credible that is, you guys. I'm not a doctor. I just did as much research as I could. And then other things said that it could potentially re-rupture the eardrum, which is, to me, a little more believable. Um, but then again, I'm not a doctor. And so there's no real telling if the doctor said he could or could not go on the flight the next day. The doctor prescribed him an antibiotic called cefuroxime, 500 and this is a pretty standard antibiotic it's given for ear infections like ear nose throat sort of deal so he was put on that and told he could go home once he got an okay from another doctor his friends wanted to stay with him they did not want to leave him in a place that he was not very familiar with by himself but he was adamant on them going home without him he was like y'all i'm so fine you do not have to stay here with me i'm a big boy i can take care of myself go home i'll see you guys when i get there this leads me to the next little bit of wishy-washy news and some people said that this did happen others say it didn't once again i couldn't find the real answer and that is that that exact same night on the 6th of july they all decided to continue drinking and then they went to eat dinner at mcdonald's so 
While all of his friends were in McDonald's, Lars said that he wanted to go and sit outside. He wasn't very hungry and he'd wait for them out there and then they could return to their hotel. Except when they went outside to meet him, where he was supposedly sitting on a bench, he was nowhere to be found. And he actually didn't show up until early hours of the morning on the 7th. So what the information I found on this occurrence is that he came home early, early, early in the morning, claimed to have gotten into another fight. He said that the same men he had fought at that bar earlier the day before had hired more people and hired Russians in specific to find him and attack him again. And this is really where the whole story starts to crumble. So as I said before, he told his friends to go ahead and go home. Even after this happened, he still insisted they go home. Uh, me personally, if I got my ass beat twice, I would not be staying in the same place by myself, that's for sure. He decided after they left to check into a hotel just for the night in Varna, and the hotel's name was Color. And a lot of people said that this hotel also was not in a very good part of town, that he really chose not the greatest place to stay. And this is where his paranoia kind of starts to kick in. His mother in Germany the night that he checked in, and he was displaying very erratic behavior to say the absolute least. He told her he didn't feel safe. He said that something was wrong with the hotel he was in. He said that the men were following him and they knew what the tablets were that he had, which I find strange because it's just antibiotics. But then again, I do live in the US. I don't, I know in some places it's extremely difficult to get medications. And so I don't know, maybe they wanted the medicine to sell it? I don't know. But he seemed very upset and very paranoid that these people wanted to get him and wanted to get the medicine that he had and the medicine that he had been prescribed. He told her to cancel every single one of his credit cards. I mean, he wanted out of there. So she went ahead, booked him a flight, and also booked him a bus home for the next morning on the 8th. He was so incredibly distressed that he didn't even stay the entire night at the hotel. And from what I gathered, he probably didn't sleep. He probably spent the entire time looking out the people on his door, looking out the window, freaking out because in the middle of the night, he decided to go ahead and leave because he could not stay in this hotel any longer. So he took a taxi to the airport and this is where you guys will probably recognize this story if you've heard it before. So that morning he was seen on airport security and I am 100% going to add footage into this because this security footage is insane. He had a red and black backpack on, he was wearing a yellow shirt, he was wearing jean shorts, and he also had a duffel bag. When he walked into the airport, he immediately stopped a woman and had a very brief conversation. Um, no one really knows what they talked about, but based off of our own assumptions and seeing where he went next, he was asking where the medical center in the airport was, and that's where he ended up following that conversation. In medical services for a total of about 45 minutes, and then a man who was dressed in a construction worker's outfit walked in. That's when the doctor said Lars got extremely freaked out and panicked. He started like mumbling, like messing with his belongings, and he eventually like mumbled something to the doctor and then just took off running. And you'll see in this video, he literally is just, I mean, dead sprint out of this airport. He wanted absolutely nothing to do with it. He ran all the way across the parking lot. The one thing I find odd though is that he's not running in the parking lot as if he's trying to escape something. He's just kind of jogging and the one thing that I find even stranger is that if he thought he was being followed, he definitely didn't look back. He didn't look to see if the person was gaining on him or anything. Like he was just casually taking a jog through the parking lot and then he proceeds to climb a barbed wire fence, jump over it, and then disappear. Ever since then, Lars has not been seen. There has been a potential sighting on Easter of 2015. A truck driver said that he picked up a man on the side of the road who appeared to look like Lars, except no one knows where the man was dropped off. There's no pictures of him. Um, and upon further investigation, there was literally nothing more to go off of. There's also been a couple of homeless people that people have taken pictures of and claim that it looks like Lars. All the ones that I've looked at, I don't think it looks like him. But this is where we get into the theories, and I am 
so excited because I have done some research, you guys. Like, I have gone through these theories. I have put them through the ringer. They've been in one ear, out the other, all around my brain. And I've got a lot to say about them. And I literally cannot wait to see the comment section. I post this video, I'm going to be like glued to my laptop, waiting to see what all of you guys have to say. Some people think that he was a drug mule. Um... I don't know. So the theory goes that the men that originally fought him were upset, but also saw it as a great opportunity. And when they sent someone to go and beat him up again at the McDonald's, um, the reason why he didn't return, disappear for literally the entire night is because he was being forced to become a drug mule. Um, a lot of people discredit this because his bags, he literally just left sitting at the airport. And when they were looked through, there was not a single trace of drugs or anything. But the main thing people are going off of is him running. It is very, very likely that he could have ingested baggies of drugs. That is a very, very common way that drug mules get drugs across countries. They just swallow little bags of it and hope for the best. And then once they are removed from the body, the drugs go to whoever they need to go to. Um, my only issue with this is that if this happened, I feel like after he had passed the drugs, he probably would have shown up again somewhere. He probably would have tried to go home. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe the men found him afterwards. Maybe he returned to them and was like, I cannot do this. I'm going to give you away. I'm a threat to you. And maybe because of that, they killed him. Maybe that was also the reason that he wanted his friends to go home so badly because he knew he was going to be transporting drugs and he did not want them brought into it in any way, shape or form. So he wanted them gone and he wanted to be by himself when he had to go to the airport with these drugs. And another thing that commonly happens is people will ingest these drugs in bags and then the bags break and overdose them, kill them. It's a very likely possibility as well that after he ran, one of those baggies broke and he could have possibly died. However, once again, I don't know if I believe this story very much. Um, I don't see why he would have wanted all of his credit cards and everything canceled afterwards. I don't see why they would want him for anything more than just moving the drugs. So a lot of that just doesn't make sense to me. And that brings us to our next theory that he basically set every single bit of this up to start a new life in Bulgaria. A lot of people do not agree with this. It's not, this is definitely not the largest theory. He's a very happy, easygoing dude. And he had no issues with life that people knew of. He was very close with his family. And people think that also could be why he really was adamant on his friends leaving because he knew he planned to stay back and he had to have some sort of reason to stay back. A lot of people say this is probably why he got into the fight to begin with, that he made sure to start the fight so that he had some sort of medical reasoning to not go. However, once again, he wouldn't have known that he was gonna get a ruptured eardrum, which is a very specific reason to not fly. I mean, if you just get into a fight and get a little bit harmed, that's not an automatic you don't have to fly card. That's like a you hurt yourself, you're stupid, get on the plane and go home card. So I don't I don't think it's very possible that he planned that because you can't just plan to get a ruptured eardrum, plan to have a doctor diagnose it, and then plan to be put on medication for it, and then be told not to fly home. So I think that one's definitely a little bit far-fetched. Some people think that the antibiotic actually caused him to have a psychotic break. And this is something that I really dove into because I myself have had to be on tons of different medications um, throughout my life. I had a bunch of crazy illnesses growing up and I definitely experienced some medications that made me feel not myself. However, after my research of this medication, I just don't think that's the cause of his behavior. Um, a lot of people say that the drug itself is actually banned in Germany. Um, there's something in it that people in Germany don't agree with. I couldn't find out exactly why. But when I looked up the drug itself, it didn't really seem to have any terrible side effects. I mean, obviously, I take that back. I retract that statement. Every single drug is like, oh, well, you might have diarrhea or a headache or you might die of a heart attack. There's obviously bad side effects to every single drug that you take, but there wasn't anything that specifically pointed to a psychotic break, any sort of psychological problems that could happen from it. Um, the biggest thing that I saw was that if you took too much of the medication, it could possibly lead to seizures, but that is 
that's the only thing that I was able to find on it. Also, at that point, um, since once again I've had reactions to antibiotics before, it takes a long time usually for you to start having a reaction to an antibiotic because of the way that it goes through your body. Um, and he would have not even been on the medication for 24 hours when all this started happening, so having a reaction that fast is not very likely. I'm not saying it's impossible, once again I'm not a doctor, but it's just not very likely. Next is that people think he had late onset schizophrenia and this is another thing that I do not think is a possibility. Once again, not a doctor. So schizophrenia tends to manifest in males between 16 and 30 and he was 28 so it would have been a very very late onset. So a lot of mental illnesses, underlying mental illnesses can be triggered and brought to life if other things happen to you. Like a lot of women who go through all the hormonal changes when they are pregnant and give birth, sometimes afterwards triggers any underlying mental illnesses like depression or anxiety or all of the above. Um, people who have traumatic injuries, sometimes it'll trigger things. So I definitely see where people are going with this, that he did get into a fight and it possibly triggered schizophrenia. However, schizophrenia is a very, very serious mental illness. It's a very intense one and it doesn't just show up overnight. While it might be triggered by something, usually, and keyword usually, there's other symptoms that start to appear way ahead of full-blown schizophrenia. People who believe this theory actually have a list of things that are common for people with schizophrenia and they kind of supported why it's possible. So irritability is one of the big ones. Um, if he got into a fight, it was very possible. He was just irritable, but then again, irritability is a very common emotion for people. Anger, same thing with a fight, but once again, anger is also a common emotion for people to have. Social isolation, this one, I don't see it. Um, a lot of people say that he was showing social isolation because he wanted his friends to go home, he didn't go inside the McDonald's, but with schizophrenia, social isolation means like you don't leave your house, like you don't go plan a trip for a week with your best friends who literally do not leave your room, you do not leave your house. Um, so once again, I don't think that's something that happened. Personally, I just don't really see that he had any signs pointing towards him having schizophrenia. I am aware that there are things that can go amiss, that a lot of people won't even notice the little changes and even the person who might be suffering themselves might even notice the changes, but to me this just doesn't seem like a very plausible explanation. I just don't understand because if he felt like he was in danger, he was in, arguably, a very safe place. I know airports sometimes are not the most safe places, but with all the security, all the different measures they take to keep people safe inside airports, you would think he wouldn't want to leave the airport. And that's what really gets me, is that if he was in a healthy state of mind and he genuinely thought he was in danger, he was being followed, he potentially could be harmed, it would make more sense to stay inside the airport to be surrounded by people who could save you if you needed it. That he thought he would be safer taking off alone without anything he owned, jumping a fence and going off into a place he wasn't familiar with. And that leads me to what I personally think happened. I did not see a lot of people suggest this theory. I just started looking up on it after reading the schizophrenia theory that he could have been triggered into something because of the fight that he got into. I think he had a TBI from the fight and that's just a traumatic brain injury. It's not something that usually goes unnoticed by a doctor. However, there are cases where it happens without a concussion, it happens without any sort of fracture in the skull. So without those things, it's really hard to say that someone has a TBI. If he was hit hard enough to rupture his eardrum, it would not surprise me if he was hit hard enough to somehow have a TBI. And I know it takes a lot of force for that to happen, but that's not something that I discredit. And when I really started looking into traumatic brain injuries and everything that happens to someone when they go through one, I think it fits the story almost perfectly. Bizarre behavior, he definitely covers that one. Disorientation, confusion, emotional outbursts, 
easily frustrated or agitated, feeling highly stressed and increased paranoia are just an example of some of the emotional symptoms that go along with a TBI. So a lot of people tend to dismiss this only because the doctor didn't find it. However, I think it is very possible that the doctor wasn't thinking to look for it. But based on how far I took my research and based on the things that I could find that were in English, uh, he definitely seemed fine the entire trip up until he was hit, up until he was in the fight. And then after that, everything very rapidly went downhill. I personally think that he is still out there. I think that he was so distressed and so paranoid and confused and obviously terrified and you know he wasn't thinking in the right state of mind because he wouldn't have run away um, him running away the way he did when he saw someone who could potentially to him be someone that was sent there to harm him shows desperation if he's going to run away from a place that is pretty safe and climb a fence, a barbed wire fence, and go off into the wilderness where he could essentially die of exposure, that shows extreme desperation. And I don't know if maybe something happened to him that he didn't tell anyone, um, that he wasn't lying about McDonald's, and that he was found and possibly threatened and lord knows what else by these other men, but no one followed him. No one came to the hotel to get him. Like. Nobody. So from our outside point of view, this is just his own actions that we don't see any sort of justification for. And that doesn't mean that there's not justification for them. But from my standpoint and what I know and the facts that I have been given through the internet, I think that he was just suffering from a TBI. And I think that he kind of created this fear and created this occurrence that he thought happened and you know think about it if the last thing he remembered before he got this brain injury this potential brain injury was being fought by people maybe that's just what stuck in his brain maybe that's just a fear that never went away um, and maybe it just grew from there because of his paranoia and because of all these other things that a TBI can create, so maybe he just really scared the crap out of himself and ran off and is out there somewhere. I think he just went into hiding. Maybe he is a homeless person right now and no one's found him yet, you know? Maybe that was him traveling. Maybe he just thinks he's safer if he just disappears and does never come back. But there is something in me that 100% believes that he is still out there and I cannot wait to hear what you guys have to say about this. I have been so excited to cover this case because it is so fascinating to me and so many of you guys have suggested it and I have watched so many videos on this guy and there's just so many crazy theories and I didn't even cover them all. I like hit the tip of the iceberg of all the theories that I thought were the most plausible or most interesting explanations to what could have happened. So let me know if you guys know any different theories down below. Let me know what your theory is. Do you believe in any of the theories that I listed? Do you think they're all ridiculous? Do you think he's still out there? Do you think he died? What do you think happened? Did he make all this up in his head or was he really being followed by somebody? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget that I am doing a Q&A next Wednesday. Leave any questions that you have for me down below. Um, I really want you guys to get to know me. I feel like I feel like I'm so serious all the time and so I can't really like portray myself to you guys very easily. So I really I really want you guys to ask questions. I've only gotten a few so far. You could also send me Snapchat videos if you want to be featured in the video. Use the hashtag AskDanielle on Twitter. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out all of my social media. Hit the subscribe button down below. Let's keep on growing our family, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!